So we are learning up, we have four learning outcomes. So the test one will be. So means all the four equals zero, all the moments equals zero. First of dry prediction, your final exam will be internal force. Your CL3, CL4 will be in your test two. So CL3 will be on frame, thrust, machine. Uh, CL4 will be uh, CG, mass, and inertia. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, today we focus on friction. Right. We we'll focus on friction. Okay, so we'll draw we'll do what is dry friction. Um, and we will not do rolling. We'll not cover rolling in this module. Um, but if we have time, uh, then we will go back uh, maybe week 13 or 14 just to give you information. Right. Um, then for friction analysis, we will only cover wages and screw. Where just means you see the the door, you want to stop the door, the the uh, triangular, right, triangular things that you put on the wall there. Screw also, uh, whether you turn clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, to screw tighten it up. We won't do belt. We will don't. We won't do bearing for this module. Huh? so. Maybe you cover belts and bearing in design or machine or other module. Okay, but the concept still same. Huh? The concept still same. Okay, so friction. There are two things. Uh, we only focus on dry friction. Means we there is no liquid friction. There is no. Um, uh, we don't study like lubricant lubricant friction and all this. So we only do dry friction, means no liquid, either it's smooth surface or rough surface uh, for this module. Okay, so it's dry, condition is dry, or some textbook, they use column friction. Uh, for this module, I will just use the word dry friction. Okay, um, remember friction always act tangent and opposite of the motion, right? Okay. Um, Okay. The rest you read, huh? Okay, dry friction, all these things you read. I just show you the equation. All right. Now, this diagram is just show you what happened at the surface. Okay, what happened at the surface? So, in previous uh, your secondary school education, you are assuming the surface is flat, but as you go deeper and deeper, the surface actually is not. If you look under microscope, it is not smooth. It's not flat. There will be some waveform surface, right? So when you when you look at friction, um, this point until this point, the left hand side, right hand side, if you move from the right to left. This friction will not be equal in the in, in the real case. Uh, in the real case. Uh. So we have a distributed load here that represents friction load. Okay. So each point each each of the contact point here will have one normal uh, contact force and contact force and contact force and and we need to use the normal force and to calculate the the friction force. Okay. So there will be N1, F1, then there's a re, uh, resultant and so on. So, but this one, uh, not our concern for statics. It just gives you information. Okay. Uh, okay, the rest you read and so on. Okay, so this one, uh, what does it mean is that um, okay, so if you're given a, di a diagram about object, you need to convert this diagram into this diagram. Uh, first, you need to know the location of your weight, 
the weight always at the center of the object. Uh, center of the object, especially this simple square object, you always half the distance from the edge, half distance from the edge. So it's A divided by 2. Right? Let's say the, the total length of the side is A. So the distance from here to here is uh, half A. P you copy, external force you copy. You cannot change the external force in the question. Then there will be two forces. One is the normal forces, normal contact force. Uh, one end is enough for, for the whole bottom surface here. One end is enough to represent all the normal contact force. This, fact, this F here, capital F here, represents friction force. Okay, so when you pull the P to the right, the object is moving to the right. So the friction will go against the motion. Your friction force will move to the left. Remember, huh? this one, uh, sometimes it will be your careless mistake in test. You might forget the direction of your friction. Okay, always flip the direction and then follow the motion. Follow the motion uh, uh, for, uh, opposite of the motion of the object. Remember, huh? this is a friction. How to find friction? Uh, friction equal to mu n. There's a, a friction coefficient multiplied by the contact force here. Okay. Now, later we will study the x here. The x uh, uh, in, in, in previous uh, lesson or in your other module lesson, you always assume that the n is at the center of the object. But in this case, we want to study whether the, the, the object will be slipping or on hold or tip over. So we need to assume, before we start analysis, we need to assume there's an x from the center. So if you see the question, you ask you the uh, if you see the question ask you whether the object will be slipping, whether the object it asks you to determine whether whether the object will be slipping uh, or at the edge of slipping or uh, slipping S L I P yeah. Slip. Huh? Slip at the edge of slip or it will tip over. Tip over mean roll over. Why why this why you can roll over? Because if you focus on point O here, for example, point O here, this edge here, you, you will have an imbalance of moment. If you put here, right? Forces only give you translation, either move left, right, up, down. Right? So, or there's an anger resultant force. Uh, but when you move your focus to one point, F multiply D, you generate for a uh, moment. So this one generate, if you focus on O here, P will, you will rotate clockwise, W will rotate anti-clockwise. And if you focus on O with the normal force here, the normal will create clockwise direction. Uh, so, there is a, and then this friction don't create anything lah, because the D is zero. F multiply D is zero. Okay. So later you still need to use equilibrium equation. All the force equal zero, all the force, uh, all the moment equal zero. Break force into X, Y. If it's 3D, then no choice. You have to use IJK. Uh, then use vector analysis to solve. Okay. So this will be our template. Every time we see the question, it gives you one object. Give you, uh, then you see the question. Question asks you, determine the friction or something, or determine the object, whether it slip or it will, it will tip over. You need to convert the left-hand diagram into the right-hand diagram. You prepare the template similar like this. Okay. Uh, remember to put in the dimension. For example, the H, the A divided do all these things. You copy from the question. Okay, so these are the general steps. Time you see the question asks you about friction. Or you see determine friction coefficient means it's a friction chapter. Already. So this one will be as uh, 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 you will be expected in your answer. You don't need to draw the this one. Huh? You don't need to draw the dot line here. Okay. Okay, the rest is uh, you read lah from the slides.
if you understand. Huh? OK, so these are the steps when you do. All the moment equals zero at point O. So this is what I explained this now. W multiply X will be positive. Because it's anticlockwise by following right hand rules. You assume. Anticlockwise positive. And you only see this one, this sign in scalar analysis. Huh? You don't draw this arrow in vector analysis. Huh? Because vector analysis, you're already showing i, j, k already. So don't need to draw this one in vector analysis. Don't need to draw this one in three-dimensional uh, analysis. Okay, just take note. So this one, minus p, h, minus p, minus because it's anti-clockwise. Uh, sorry, clockwise. Okay. Uh, equals zero. Uh, where is my n? Huh? Wait. Huh? Something wrong with my this one. The N component is missing in. Okay, so if you see the equation on the slide here, it do not consider the normal force. In this is in this one. Uh, because it gives you. Okay, this one, it take out maybe. Uh, I think something wrong with the equation. Uh, you should include n inside there. All right. Uh, but anyway, the 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 main objective here is to let you know that if you uh, consider the if the question asks you whether it will tip over, you need to you need to purposely put a x distance from n. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this one. Again, uh, on my slide here, the capital N should be included in the equation. Yeah. Hey, uh, sorry, sorry. I think it's O is here. Sorry. O is here. O is here. Not, not at the edge. Uh, then this one correct. Okay. I missed out the, the small curve here. Yeah. If the O is on the n capital N position, then it's correct. Then then this this equation correct. Okay. Hmm. Right now, application of friction in happen in our daily life. Sometimes we just ignore them. Right. So some simple design like the broomstick uh, friction. You just design a a locker, very simple design. By just a round rubber, you just put there, then you just slot inside the object. This is a friction, a uh, very simple design, and you use the principle of friction. Um, <clears throat> if you work as a design engineer later, um, keep your designs as simple as you can. Sometimes, uh, you, when you when you graduate, your your brain will will think a lot of uh, complicated things, so it's it's very hard to think in a simple way sometimes, especially after you graduate the 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 first few months after you graduate, right? You, you your brain will, will ask you to design something very complex things, but what the industry one is simple, and easy to manufacture. Okay. Um, okay, <clears throat> now we want to see the uh, 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 thing called in, in, impending motion. Now, impending motion, so here, uh, impending motion means the motion, the after effect. What happens if you 
have this kind of system, then what happened to that object? Okay, so let's say we have a square object with the W at the center, all right? Then you have the N and friction force. So these two will give you resultant forces, all right? resultant forces in blue color with the angle. Yeah. Then you have a external force P with the, and we purposely put the distance X here to see whether the object, what happened to the object? Well, the object will be slipping or roll, tip over. Okay. So uh, this is something new compared to the previous chapter. You only do this one when you see the question asks you about friction. Huh? Don't do, don't, don't apply this one in other chapter. Uh, you only apply this one uh, when you see the question asks you about friction. Okay. Uh, for your test one, test one just a normal friction diagram. You don't need this one uh, for your test one. You just draw a N or the object, friction opposite of the motion. Uh, question one, uh, test one, question, uh, question, test one, question two, you need to think a little bit, uh, the direction of that object. Then you need to draw the correct arrow for the friction force. New thing a little bit. Uh. Okay. Okay. So here, in the case where surface contact are rather slippery, the friction force may not great enough to balance the P and the block will in the motion of slipping. Means the friction force cannot hold the object the P will continue to pull the object, then the case is called slippery or tends to slip. Okay. So, uh, if the P slowly increase, the F respond means the friction force, the F component responding increase until it attains certain maximum value that we call maximum friction force or maximum static force or limiting static friction force. Okay. So when this friction force value is reached means maximum static friction force happen, the block is in unstable equilibrium. So it will go into motion, means you go into kinetic motion. Okay, so since any further increase of cost uh, this one. Uh. So when it's moved, then it move into kinetic. Uh. Okay. So that's why in your experiment you learn about static friction and kinetic friction. So it means you you put the things and you see whether the object move or not. Uh, that one is mu s. Then if the object move already, then with the center angle, you need to feel you need to find a mu k. So this is the equation that you're very familiar. Friction force equal to mu n. And we in the in this in this uh, uh, early stage we use static. We assume the the friction can hold the object. Okay. So in in dynamic then uh, in dynamic you need to do analysis on the on the mu value. Then you see whether it's in motion or keep in place when you go into dynamic. Yeah? Okay, so the angle of the static friction, same by using tangent equation. So tangent is Fs divided by x, divided by the n. Huh? So this one is very direct. Huh? Okay, so these are the information for you. So these are the mu s for all the material. It, it, be, it will be in the range of all these values. Huh? Uh, you don't need to remember. You'll be given in a question, uh, or you can find in the internet uh, for your uh, lab report. Okay. okay, what if the object in motion? Object in motion, the only changes is the, the notation small s into k. k means kinetic is start moving already. Okay, the rest will be the same. Okay, 
So if the object is holding in place, we will use the word impending. If the object in motion, then we use the word motion. Uh, so for the lecture uh, illustration, if you see a dash line like this, dash line blue arrow, it means we assume it will be in the impending motion, means it's either holding and it's going to move already. Uh, means uh, the friction force is able to hold until a certain value maximum. Then after that maximum value, it will go into motion. Okay. Uh, the rest you read. <clears throat> okay, the rest you read. Uh, this one is just a uh, info for you. Okay. It means the the friction is it cannot handle the P anymore, then you start moving. Lah. Okay. So it's left and right. It just tell you the the difference between the two. Um, if you represent the <clears throat> if you see the left and right, see the left and right is that when you reach motion already, yeah, the 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 force, ah, the force component here, the force becomes smaller. So this friction component becomes shorter compared to the left hand side. This one. But I won't ask you this, this diagram. I will ask you the diagram on the top. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, and then you see uh, the differences between statics and kinetic. When you start to move already, the X no longer important, uh, the small X. When you start to move, the small x here no longer important. You only straight away calculate the friction, uh, kinetic friction. Right. So mu k is like this, kinetic friction. So it's smaller, mu k is smaller than s. Mu k, okay, this one. When it start to move already, the friction force it will be smaller than the static one. Normal component contact force still the same. So the only parameter that is changing is the mu. Okay, just just remember that. So in your experiment, if your experiment your mu k is larger than your mu s, something wrong in your analysis. Check ah, uh, check your lab report. If your mu k value is larger than mu s, then something wrong. Your mu s should be larger than mu k. Okay, then the angle also same. You use tangent theta. Okay. And the mu s, the, the static angle also larger than the kinetic. I mean, whatever is statics one is larger than kinetics. Okay. The rest you read, uh, the rest you read, uh, means if you look at the graph, the force versus P. So if, if the object, if the friction are uh, able to hold the object, the you increase, increase, increase until the static force is up to this point from here to here, there's no motion. Means the friction, this is the blue line is the friction uh, magnitude. So up to a maximum point, this will be no motion. And most of the case, you need to find this maximum point. It means you, 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 you need to put in the mu s, uh, mu s into the equation. Then after this point, it will start to move already. The, uh, the, the magnitude of the friction will drop and then it will maintain in mu k. This horizontal line, it means it move in the, uh, it move in the constant speed. Then after constant speed, become faster and faster and then the mu the, the friction will be will, will, will drop a little bit okay okay the rest you read okay the rest you read okay so when you see the question asks you to find 
sleeping at the surface or about to sleep, uh, then you use this equation, mu s equal, uh, friction equal to mu s n. But uh, when the sleeping at the surface happen, is happening when the sleeping already, sleeping means you start to move already, then you need to use the kinetic friction rate. Yeah, these are the uh, two important points for today's class. Okay. Okay. Uh, top of friction. Okay, this one is there are three types no apparent impending, impending motion at all points, then impending motion at some point. So, this is just for info. Right? Just for info. Uh, so, what mean by no apparent impending motion? So, this one, if you have an object, you have two different surfaces. One is 0.3, one is 0.5. Um, so, we assume strictly equivalent problems means stable. Required number, the required number of unknown to be equal and number of availability equilibrium uh, equation. So in this case, because you are equilibrium, so you need to make sure that your friction force is, your, your force uh, that you calculate is less than the maximum force. This is a maximum force, uh, maximum force that can hold the object. So this one is, is just to tell you that if the object doesn't move or stay in place, the force, the friction force that you calculate at the bottom of the object must less than this value. Huh? So what does it mean? It means that previous your solution, you always write mu s n, previous, previous one uh, of friction. In, in chapter five, you don't straight away jump into the solution. Uh, for example, so you convert this diagram into the body diagram. You write like this. Uh, if the question asks you whether in pending or motion, Anyhow, also you 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 will draw the x here, then right end. Then over here, uh, this will be the careless mistake happen. For for chapter five, don't write mu s n here. Don't write like this. Write f friction because you want to do analysis whether this object is slipping or not slipping. At the side of your calculation, you can write friction or you can write static friction maximum equal mu s n. You can at the side, you can do a calculation. Because you are comparing this value with this value. Okay, now if this value or I just put f more f la. if your op if your capital f smaller than this maximum static will not move the object will not move if the f equal to maximum you will see the question asks you at the edge of sleeping I meaning it will start to move right but have a move but add a little bit more it will go into kinetic okay uh, so what if your fs uh, fs friction more than this one uh, sorry uh, sorry uh yeah, so this will be the 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 analysis lah. Will be the analysis. Although we know that the kinetic will be smaller than this one. 
Okay, uh, don't confuse with kinetic. Uh. Kinetic is another dimension. Right? Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the one that I write on the whiteboard here is to remind you, don't substitute the value or don't write mu s in the free body diagram. If not, it will confuse you. you your brain will think, oh, this one equal to this one. When you do analysis, you will skip this analysis. You assume that it's on hold. So actually, some, some case, this value is smaller than this value. Okay. When it's smaller, means it's on hold. So if this value is equal to this one, so the case will be, uh, uh, if you use mu s, uh, mu s maximum value, so it will be at the edge of sleeping. At the edge, uh. not sleeping yet, but at the edge. Okay. So this, the rest you read. Uh. Okay. So f smaller or equal. Uh, sorry, uh, let me read, read again. Uh. Uh, this is no impending. Okay, uh, let me follow my slide. If your F smaller than the value, <coughs> slipping will happen. Okay, follow this slide. Eh? If the F value that you find is smaller than the mu S, slipping will happen and it will not balance. Follow my slide. Eh? The one I write on the whiteboard, I confuse with other principle. Already. Okay, this one you read, huh? this one you read, no impending. So this one you just convert the left hand side diagram to the right hand side diagram. You saw the expert already, especially the contact point at B. Okay, yeah? contact point at B is a pin. So you have two components there. So at A, a is a round surface, so you only have one contact point. This is a this is the reaction force or contact point. Yeah? So you have a normal one point there because it's a round. Okay. Then uh, important uh, you should be able to understand the direction, the arrow direction of A and B, uh, A and C. Why A pointing this way, C pointing that way? Because when you put the object. A will swing to the left. It will swing to the left. So friction opposite motion. Same with C. C will swing to the uh, C will swing to the right. So friction move to the left. Okay, this will be the careless mistakes huh? in most of the assessment. You'll forget this one. Okay, in your test one, question two, you need to think something like this in the solution. You need to think where does the stick roll uh slip to left or right? You need to think a bit. Okay. The rest you read. Uh, what else? So in this case, if no if no apparent impending, we also assume the friction force A and C was smaller than the maximum static force. So when there's impending motion happen, then you, you straight away use kinetic friction. Okay, when the motion is impending at the point of contact, you use kinetic friction already. Means there's a motion happen. Okay, so the rest you read. So you transfer the left and right. This diagram is important for your task one. Huh? This slide is important for your task one, question two. Huh? Yeah. Don't say you don't know. Huh? I already showed this one already. Huh? Okay. So, uh, yeah. If you have any question uh, on any question on 
on converting the left to right, come and see me. Okay. Uh, I, again, I want to highlight the direction of the friction force. What happened if the questions uh, mention this blue color wall is moved? What happened to the FB? What is the value of FB? If the question mentioned this is the blue color wall is smooth surface. Will be equal? What? Zero. Uh? Uh, you can draw in your free body diagram, but please write equal zero here. You can you can even not drawing the FB in your diagram if the question mentioned smooth surface. If you draw, you need to tell me if you draw and you do not write zero, it means there's some value here. Uh, okay. Okay, the rest you read. Uh, this one will be impending motion at all contact. So is this the same? It's the same like previously, right? OK, so you see compare if P increase and it will either cause slipping at A and no slipping at C. So it, it can either slipping at A and no slipping at C or no slipping at A, uh, no slipping at A, no slipping at C, you will have FA equal to mu A, A N. And if you have something less or equal, this one represents slipping happen. Okay. Is there? If your FC this one, FC less or equal to this one, you're assuming FC uh, something happen. Uh, something sl means slipping will happen. Uh, slipping will happen. So you just do uh, slipping occur at C and no slipping at A, so um, wait, I need to check my slides. Just now my slide mentioned this one slipping happened, right? Let me check. That's why I'm, I'm confused just now. Okay. Ignore the this one. Ignore this one. I think this one wrong already. I think this one wrong. Uh, don't 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 link this black uh red color box with this one. Don't link, uh. Uh, important is this one. This one because it's no impending motion. Uh, this 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 uh friction uh. This you have three type uh. If you have no apparent impending motion, then you can read these slides. There are three types of motion, are three types of friction. We have no apparent impending motion and impending motion. This one you go and read. Huh? Each case, if the question gives you no apparent pending motion, then you use this statement. It will take some time to 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 accept uh, this one. Uh, don't mix, don't mix no apparent to impending. Uh, they are separate uh, condition. Uh, the question will be very focused. It will ask you, it will give you like, assume no apparent pending motion. Then you use the slides related to this one. So if the question mentioned impending motion at all points contact, then you use the section for impending motion. Then another one is this one. At some point, then you use the equation, the 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 inequality of equation. Yeah? So this one, this slide is for the first uh, no ap no apparent impending motion. You will use this equation, and if the force is less than this one, then slipping will happen. Under no apparent impending motion happen, you are assuming equilibrium happen. Then if the second case, uh, if it's second case, join this one. Uh, 
under no apparent pending, A and C will slip if the value is less or equal. The first case, huh? So the second one is impending motion at all point of contact. So the total numbers unknowns will equal to the total number of available uh, in the equation plus total number available for the friction. Okay, then you use mu k. So if you have this kind of case, uh, second case, impending motion of all, time, all point of contact. So you have five unknowns. For example, this case, one, two, three, four. Uh, what else? Uh? Where's my five? One, two. And the angle here. This is one of the unknown, right? So you use three equivalent equation, fx equal to zero, fy equal to zero, moment equal zero. There are three equation. Then you need to add in uh, two static equation, means these two friction equation to solve, to put inside the equation, right? Okay, the third, the third type, huh? impending motion at some point of contact, then you use this equation. Okay, so this one, impending motion at some point of contact, you'll start to see two bodies in the question. For example, this one, uh, body AB and BC. Then you need to split the two the free body diagram into two. One is for member AB, one is for member BC. Okay. Uh, why you need to split? Because you have a loss of unknown and you try to link the value of BX, BY share together with two members. You are solving simultaneous equation. One set for AB, one set for BC. There will be something you need to move the AB equation into uh, BC equation, BC side equation, or you need to bring BC side equation into AB because these two points are sharing. You're going to be bring, bring the you're going to bring the equation BX into this member, BY into this member, and this BX BY is linked with this all these unknown. So actually, you're solving simultaneous equation, right? Uh, I want to highlight this one. This one, the arrow is opposite. Uh. If your first member AB is pointing to the right, your BX for member BC were pointing to the left. It must balance. Huh? Same with the Y component. One point down, one point up. So this is a pin. Uh, we will look more detail in this when you go into internal uh, forces. Okay, but this is just a highlight. Lah. Okay, so there are two scenarios. If slipping at A, is slipping at A, then you use mu A N, means you use the value of this one, mu A N, then A will slip. And no slipping, then you use less than something, less than the maximum value of this one. If slipping happen. This one, different from the first point. Eh? This one, different from the first point. When you have two members, then try not to confuse with the first point. Okay. So if you're comparing two objects, you're using these slides. Eh? So if you're assuming A slipping, uh, sorry, no slipping at A, you use less. Slipping, then you use equal. So this one you are guessing lah, which one is sleeping, which one is not guessing. So uh, from your calculation, then you know whether which case happened. Okay. The rest you read. So this. Um, okay, example one. Uh, 
uh, just go very fast. Huh? So this, you won't see this kind of question in test one. Huh? It's too simple. Huh? Too simple. So this one, you convert to free body diagram. Remember all the point here, gravitational force, put in the dimension, split all the angles, all the external force with angle into X and Y. It's a normal case. Huh? So then you convert into this diagram, huh? to this diagram. Again, chapter five, you need to put in the X there. If you see the question asks you whether it's in equilibrium, equilibrium means another meaning, it means what is the motion? What, how do it behave? Will it tip over? Will it slipping and all this? So you draw free body diagram, then you use three motion. You, could, uh, you have uh, all the force equals zero, all the moment equals zero. Again, don't use, don't write mu n in the, uh, the this one you write just, just to remind yourself, important you write the F friction here, All right? So you see the, the equation now. Huh? So you write the complete equation in X direction, right? So all the direction to the left, uh, to the right positive, go up positive, then moment and anticlockwise positive, you sum all the things together. Okay, you're solving, you get F friction equal to this one. Okay, so F friction to this one, then you need to, you find the main component of this purple color. Don't substitute inside huh, in the beginning. You want to do analysis. What is the motion? So you calculate the friction component first. Then only you, you find the friction force, maximum friction force. Then you compare with this value. Huh? So the NC is this one. Uh, oh, this one is uh, in equilibrium. Huh? In NC is this one. Then X is from the moment equation. This one, this one, you arrive at this one. This one will give you NC. This one will give you X. So what happened if you're negative? Means the real case, this one should be this side. Huh? Okay, so the rest you read. So you calculate, huh? you need to do analysis. F, what is the maximum friction force magnitude? You, you substitute 0.3 and the NC value, again, NC doesn't change all the time, it's a contact force. So you substitute, you get one value. The static maximum force is 70.9. The value you find is 69.3. What does it mean? It means that the friction magnitude is less than maximum. The crane will not slip. Okay, the maximum point is here. Friction value you find to make it stable. You friction force only 69.3 in this scenario. Okay, so it's still below the maximum friction. So the object will not move, it will not slip. It's very, very near. Huh? Okay, so, okay. So I will stop the recording here. I will show you a few examples. All right. You don't have class, right? Give me another five more minutes. Huh? I just want to show you some example.